Good morning, everyone. On this final day of January, our final Sunday with the theme of imagination, a gift that we continue to rely on as we envision the world we seek for ourselves and for others. So how is it with your spirit this morning? I hope that you and yours are safe and well and that you are finding what you need to navigate the winding roads of these days. All month long, we've been inviting everyone to consider identifying a word for the year, a word and idea to travel with for the next 11 months. We'll explore this more in the service. And here's a heads up that we'll be inviting you to name your word for the year this morning and to use your phone or your computer or your tablet to send your word into a shared cloud that we can all see. So you might want to have your smartphones ready for later in the service. Beth Caro is here to assist you via the chat if you have questions. And Gail Johnson Vaughn is here as worship associate for one more Sunday in this, this wonderful month. I invite all of us now to gather from across these miles in the spirit of this particular hour by singing of the mystery, the strength, the struggle, the power of community and of this life we share. Good morning. I feel like we should say welcome to winter at last. Welcome to snow and rain. Welcome to a clearing of the air and clearing of the emotional smog we've been breathing for so long. Finally, we can take an out breath. And most importantly, welcome to the Unitarian Universalist community of the mountains. After a month of Sundays, you know that I am Gail Johnson Vaughn, and I hope you know what a delicious opportunity this has been for me to be your lead worship associate for this month 
of exploring what it means to be a people of imagination. We have imagined a lot of things, including the power of imagination to spawn awareness, action, new possibilities, new realities. Imagination, that fertile ground that lives between before and after in that often unappreciated now. Those of you who've gone into deeper exploration of our theme word each month, and those of you who have experience in adopting an annual one word know not just the power of a single word, but also its depth and breadth. This knowing is part of the welcome we offer. Welcome to UUCM, a community, a community where you are welcome to join in cultivating our individual and collective spiritual, emotional, and intellectual strength. Not just by using tools like being aware of the space between stimulus and response, and like selecting and dancing with your one word, but also engaging our courageous love and that sense of wonder to communicate with each other what we discover. For some of you, this is your first time with us. Welcome. However you came to be with us, I hope our time together feeds your soul. Some of you are not brand new, but still newish. I hope you feel our welcome more deeply every time you are with us. And of course, many of you have been with us for long enough to have claimed this community as your own a place you know that you belong, that over the days and months or years, the felt sense of welcome is part of how you define our community. It doesn't surprise me that even in this time of required physical separateness, we have found a way, a meaningful way to connect, to care and share with each other as we welcome each other's authentic selves. No wonder I love being your worship associate and love looking out at all of you with appreciation and love. Welcome to this time together. In the soft light of this flame by Reverend Scott Taylor, adapted by Gail Johnson Vaughn. May the soft light of this flame, as it is echoed in the flames of each of our chalices, grow to the bright light of truth, courage, and justice. May we notice new possibility where we were close to giving up hope. May we find bridges to understanding that seemed beyond our grasp. May our hands reach out, transcending race, class, and politics. May this emerging light pull a new story into view that we may believe again in the world we imagine. That was a beautiful adaptation, Gail, and beautiful reading, Allison. Thank you. I invite you to light your chalice at home, our flaming chalice, the symbol of our tradition, as I light the chalice here at UUCM, which is now fueled with a plant-based oil, I'm happy to report. Allison's been encouraging that. So we've made a move not only toward health, but also toward sustainability. I invite you to light your chalice.
There are approximately 150 living members of the Nevada City Rancheria Nisenan tribe, the only federally recognized tribe ever within the boundaries of Nevada County. In our commitment to be in respectful and right relationship with the descendants of this area's indigenous people, we place a small basket of black oak acorns on our altar each week. In so doing, we remind ourselves and acknowledge that the Nisenan people are still here among us today, though nearly invisible, that we are on Nisenan land that was never ceded, that the original tribal families have yet to recover from the near genocide of their people. As residents or visitors in Nisenan land, let us support the Nevada City Rancheria Nisenan tribe in its efforts to stabilize their people as well as their campaign to restore federal recognition. Call to Worship and Action by Sharon Wiley. It is said that ministers are here to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. I say we are all afflicted and we are all comfortable. May our time together this morning be a comfort and a confrontation. May we here find peace in times of tumult. May we here invite tumult into lives of peace. May we here find calm in the times of restlessness. May we here allow restlessness to evolve into action. Let this be the place that you consider what you've never considered. Let this be the place you imagine for yourself something new and unthinkable. May this hour bring dreams of new ways of being in the world. Come, let us worship together, meaning let us hold up together what is of worth. My word possibilities in the tsunami that was 2020. When we were challenged to pick a word that would define 2020, I decided on a positive one that would encourage me to try new things, push the limits of my comfort zone, egg on my creativity. So I chose possibilities. It was all starting out pretty well. I took a class in silversmithing from Asif Studio in January. For February, my husband gave me a gift of a three-month membership to the Curious Forge for my anniversary. I was signed up for a week-long workshop in Las Vegas with my space artist group. It would take place at the end of March. I also started a digital painting for my latest space art quilt, and I was planning on entering two art quilts I had done the year before in some major quilt shows. I was also attending the gym on a regular basis and trying to learn Tai Chi. Well, I got a month and a half into my membership in the forge, learned how to fabricate projects on the laser cutter and 3D printers, and was trying to learn how to throw ceramic pots. Then, of course, the tsunami that was COVID hit. Everything was closed down, canceled, and otherwise came to a halt. Enter the new reality and not so many possibilities. My workshop in Vegas was canceled and will hopefully be rescheduled when the pandemic is over. All the clubs, groups, and of course the church went remote on June. Life was now viewed from a portal on my computer screen. There were some bright spots as my international space artist group now has bi-monthly workshops on Zoom. So members from all over the globe can see each other and participate. My photography club did a photo challenge and assigned us a random grid around Nevada City and Grass Valley to shoot. And the work was shown at the Nevada City Art Gallery with a virtual show opening. My art quilt mini group took the challenge of creating a group work of individual quilts inspired by Beatles songs. We were able to meet outdoors safely, distance in one of the members' gardens to complete the project. 
Finally, three of my space art quilts were accepted in a show in the Air Force Museum in Ohio, which has now been postponed until this year. I've struggled through this year like so many others, and frankly, after more than nine months, I'm zoomed out. My patience is at an all-time low and my concentration not a whole lot better. Getting out and exercising to relieve the stress and find solace in our beautiful Sierras help. But an accident that caused a fall and an eye injury at the end of May while I was walking my dog really tested me and I had to throttle back my exercise while I healed over the summer. I've used the metaphor that my cup is too full and anything else put in it just falls over the side. There is room for no more. In retrospect, I really think my word for 2020 should have been endurance. Not sure what I want to pick for 2021. I invite us into a meditation by Teresa Innes Soto. Remembering the future. I invite you to settle into the words or perhaps the image there of the water and sky and snowy edge. Can we develop the skill of remembering the future? Can we commit to build the community that will extend into a time that we only know by memory because it will outlast us? Memorize the compass points of the day yet to come. The truth, the love, the fire, the endless yes of the horizon. Shake the scales from your imagination. Reach, stretch, rise. There is no more time for pretending that everything can be all right without your care, without your attention. You can mourn, grief being more real at times than the promise of the sunrise, more real than the peace of the moon that by inconstant silver turns, disappears. And yet, while we may mourn changes, losses, deceptions and betrayals, beneath the ash, we find the ember. We weep and then, as we have learned from others, we organize Remember the day toward which we gather, the tomorrow toward which we advance. It is with your actions today that you engage that muscle memory, that sense of smell, the ragged velvet feel of a day that you have never lived. It is also your day. Remember it well. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark David Buckles, and I'm excited to share one of my favorite hymns with you that you may already know. It's Peace Like a River. And uh, one of the things that I love about this song, this hymn, is that um, it's not all happy. <laughs> it acknowledges the many things that we're feeling and that we can have complicated feelings. We can we can hold pain and joy at the same time, and that that's okay, and even that that can be worth celebrating, that we feel those things. So um, I love that we sing about having peace like a river, and pain like an arrow, and strength like a mountain. And in the end, we return to this idea of peace, that we always have the ability to tune back into that peace like a river, in our souls. Um, and when I think of a river, I think of the fact that no matter what, it just keeps going. I hope you'll sing Peace Like a River with me. If you don't know it, I think you'll pick it up really quickly. It goes like this. 
I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got pain like an arrow. I've got pain like an arrow. I've got pain like an arrow. I've got pain like an arrow in my soul. I've got pain like an arrow. I've got pain like an arrow. I've got pain like an arrow in my soul. I've got tears like the raindrops. I've got tears like the raindrops. I've got tears like the raindrops. I've got tears like the raindrops in my soul. I've got tears like the raindrops. I've got tears like the raindrops. I've got tears like the raindrops in my soul. I've got strength like the mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain. I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. Like a mountain, I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Thank you, everyone. Peace, love, joy, tears, pain, strength, all could be meaningful words for the year. 
I named at the beginning of the month the familiar awareness that New Year's resolutions rarely last even to the end of January, even till now. This is why we are inviting instead the more successful practice of locating a word for the year, a companion and a lens for the year, a word you spend time with over time. We are inviting the spiritual practice of keeping our word with us as we find our way through the year, through the pandemic and the politics, as we navigate our internal changes as well as the social changes, as we consider our many decisions, as we reflect on our days. Like any spiritual practice, this is a tool for engaging the inner work that unfolds as we live our responses to the outer world. The idea is to keep placing our word in conversation with whatever arises in our lives. Asking ourselves, what could honesty or love or integrity or peacefulness or courage or ease have to do with what's happening now? With what we're thinking and feeling, with, with what we're wrestling with, with what we're, with what we're doing. My word last year was honesty. I had in mind particularly honesty with myself about what is true for me, what sustains me, what is sustainable, what I really want and what I truly need. Being home by myself so much of the year in a social world turned upside down put me face to face with my questions of honesty often and deeply enough that my behavior is actually starting to shift a little. I move slowly. Like a seed that's planted in one season and harvested in the next, it's last year's word that's starting to bear fruit now. And ultimately, our word will aim us outward as well as inward, as the story suggested. As we spend time with it, it will aim us outward too. Robin's story of choosing the word possibility with expectations for what that would mean for her, only to have the pandemic and life thwart her plans, is a great example of an invitation to let go of our intentions for our word and to keep asking simply what it might have to say to the new circumstances as they arise. Rather than trying to force our word to have a particular meaning or a particular effect. I know that many of you have been thinking about what your word will be. I've been hearing some of your stories. We invited you to let your word find you. We invited you to look in and to look up. Here on this very last day of the month, a final reflection time before we invite you to share your word with each other, keeping in mind that there are any number of words that could serve you well. One suggestion I shared earlier from Dan Britton is to choose a new word, even if you feel there's more you want to do with last year's word, even if last year's word felt interrupted by the pandemic, even if you didn't give it much time and attention, you are in a new place. You have changed. The world's in a new place. Notice a new word is Dan's encouragement. Our Soul Matters authors point out that when we apply the idea of imagination to our lives, our theme this month, we often frame imagination as a goal of improvement. Kind of like in the story, how we're going to be our best selves. It's just as many of us do with our choice of our word for the year. What's going to help us be a better self? We look for the word that we think might help us become better persons or more organized or more loving. And that's one possibility. But if your word feels mostly like a should or an ought, if it comes in someone else's voice, if it feels like unpleasant but necessary medicine or homework, perhaps that's the right word or perhaps you let go of that word choice or at least be open to the ways your word might also illuminate your days. 
It doesn't need to be only about driving toward a more perfect future, as our Soul Matters authors put it, but also about pulling the sacred into our present, shining a light that reveals beauty and joy and a sense of being held. Our word might be most about the world coming alive for us. Perhaps the word that's trying to find you is very fundamental. Kevin, Kevin Corker and Jr. offered a TED Talk in San Diego, sharing how he invites his college students to apply the word yes to their lives, to say yes to some of the things they typically say no to, a journey that often transforms their life. Perhaps yes is your word for this year, or perhaps your word is no. The sacred no that allows you to say yes to what truly matters. Whatever word is arising for you, whatever word is inviting you to travel with it for a time, I invite you to notice and to greet your new word without expectation for what it's going to offer you. Let go of any plan for what it's going to do for you so that you remain open to its full gifts. Commit to travel with your word, to dance with it, wrestle with it, to let it surprise you and to inform your conversations. And commit not to a specific outcome, but simply to keep your word with you. I invite you to write it down, to place it where you'll bump into it. So here's this final invitation to take a moment, to breathe perhaps, to breathe more slowly and deeply than you've been. And to feel for your word. If you've already got one in mind and heart, try it on one more time in this moment. Let go of any expectations and see if it still feels like your word for right now. Whether you've had a word in mind or not, Trust your silent, intuitive self. Breathe deeply. Relax into your body and your breathing. And see what word rises, what word greets you, no matter how surprising. I invite you to let Kate Cannon's wonderful new song accompany you for a couple more minutes in your thoughtfulness. If it were up to me, no one would tell a child That blue's the only color for the sky I'd give out pots of finger paints, a dozen hues or more From their very own messy smearing, they'd find colors never seen
From their very own messy mingling they'd find harmonies never heard before. True heart never goes from coincide the lines. It comes from breaking through boundaries we never knew were there. From banging on piano keys and scribbling on the page. From the joyful jangled chaos of play. To live their life to please someone else I'd give a library of books a forest to explore From their very own fumbling wandering they'd find dreams Never dreamed before Let's grow a world where people see beyond the lines Imagine Trust to where we all are truly free Because that better world will never come from coloring inside the lines It comes from breaking through boundaries we never knew were there From banging on piano keys and scribbling on the page From the joyful jangled chaos of play from the joyful jangled chaos of play. Bob, we can go right through to the slides. So we're about to ask you what your word is. And here's how we're going to invite you to share it. So if you have a device and want to go to menti.com, it's a nice, simple web address, M-E-N-T-I.com. They'll ask you for your code, and the code is 984855. So that's up on the screen there. If you have a phone, you might also put it in camera mode, like you're about to take a picture. And if you hold it up to the black and white image there, that square, um, those of you who have QR readers in your phones, it will take you right to that site. So a couple ways you can get to the site. Going through menti.com. Beth is pasting it in the chat as well. So there'll be a link there if you want to go directly from the chat uh, from that link. You'll just need to know it's 98, 48, 50, and 5 if you go to the website. The QR code will take you right there automatically. And invite you to type in your one word, your word for the year. If there are more people in your home than one person, you could actually, there are spaces for three different people to put in their words. And you can also come back, um, and if there are more than three people in your, in your household, and add some more. So I invite you to type in your one word. In a moment, we'll get to see those words as they appear. Now, if you don't have access to one of those methods, but you do have access to the chat, you can type your word into the chat and Beth and Gail will help get your words where they need to go here this morning. So if you're on the phone, we'll look for, you're welcome to email me your words for the future. We wanna gradually collect people's words. But here I'll share my screen now so we can see the words as they appear. Got your, got, got your place there, menti.com or the QR code. I'll enter endurance for Robin. So in these word clouds, words that appear more often show up larger. So if people, multiple people are choosing the same word, and it'll show up larger. Inspiration. Sorry. Oh, thanks, Beth. I'll put in positive imagination. I'll get preparation. I'm putting in legacy.
Some of these words may inspire your own too. I'm putting in acceptance for Dorothy. Oh, I got ease of being, sorry. And I'll take spirit. And I'm entering love for Bonnie. Is this going in? I think it is. Transformation, learning, flexible, evaluate, self-care, equanimity, willingness, wellness, optimism. Put in attention for Marilyn. Love. Um, Susan Merrill is asking, where do we see the words? Uh, you should be seeing them on your screen. If you're, if you're watching the service like you would normally do, you'll see them on the screen. Did you get attention, Gail? I did, and commitment and ease. Okay, and I'll put in reach. Okay, and I'm putting in embrace. Beautiful words. Accept I'll, intuition. I'll do trust. And I've got Sue's word choice. Is this, I want to make sure that this is going in when I press read. It is. You press submit. Okay. Kindness, spirit, magic, oh, nurture, harmony, playful, humble, choice. Beautiful, beautiful travel companions for the year. I'm putting sympathy. Sorry, I got booted off for a second. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. So in a moment, we'll, we'll, we'll move back to the active part of the service. And you can keep adding to this. It will still keep collecting, even, even once we're past the screen. Voyager, playful exercise, rebirth. Acceptance, patience, listen, gratitude, determination, kindness, beauty, hope, have more than a single person on them, freedom, trust. Choice. We'll gradually gather this. I'll, we'll share it in uh, the E Chalice and some other ways too, so you'll see the full, full complement of what we have at that point. Beautiful. May these be, may these be true companions for you. Again, I invite you to keep them in front of you without any expectation for what they're going to do. But let them let them be companions, lenses that you touch base with as often as you can, especially in those moments where you're struggling. So I'm gonna stop my share. Here's one last look at our screen so far. Again, feel free to continue to add if your words has, hasn't been entered yet or to email it to me and we'll add it to the cloud afterward. What a beautiful community's worth of travel companions. May they serve you well throughout these coming months, no matter what's unfolding. And in the words of Teresa, once again, may we develop here the skill of remembering the future as we travel with our words. Let us memorize the compass points of the day yet to come. The truth, the love, the fire, the endless yes of the horizon. Those words that you've chosen. Let us together shake the scales from our imagination. Let us reach, stretch, rise. And I'll plant a simple seed to think about if the congregation were to have a word for the year, their word for the whole congregation to travel with, what might that be? We'll come back to it, but I'll drop that seed in. Today, January 31st, 
I invite you to let your word arrive and know that no matter what that word is, there will be richness in traveling with it this year. So may it be for each of us and for all of us. The Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh says, your body is your first home. Breathing in, I arrive in my body. Breathing out, I am home. Many of you might have noticed that I have used the word houseless instead of homeless when I have invited you to contribute to the work that Sierra Roots, our partner for this month, is doing in our community. Not too long ago, I was told this is now the preferred word for those experiencing a lack of housing. And because of Thich Nhat Hanh's quote, I understand why. People experiencing houselessness may feel at home in their communities or in their families or even in their cars. And a great number of houseless individuals are veterans. They might feel very at home in the military and still need a place to stay. An organization working in Oregon to house veterans has a motto. Not everyone has housing, but every person has a home. As we have heard from members this month, words matter. That's why I've made a conscious choice to use houseless instead of homeless. So I invite you to join me if it feels right to you. As we pass the virtual plate, imagine seeing the baskets filling up to continue the work we do here at UUCM and the work that Sierra Roots is doing as well. To my mind, that's money well spent. Although we're not passing the basket in person, your generosity remains essential to our ability to sustain the work of our community. There are several ways to contribute. You may text an amount to 833-579-0483, give via our website at uugrassvalley.org, via PayPal at paypal.me slash uucm, or mail to UUCM 246 South Church Street, Grass Valley, California, 95945. Thank you.
Thank you all so much for your generous gifts. Let us dedicate these offerings to uphold our highest ideals of a world more compassionate, sustainable, and just. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy all month long has been uh, inviting our offering. It's something she is glad to do, and you do that so beautifully, Wendy. Thank you. Gail, what a joy to work with you all month long. Gail brings such a richness to worship associating and thinking through and feeling through the services. Beth, thanks for being our chat host as always. Bob there uh, hosting the, the computer stream sending for us. Gail and Conrad did editing this week as well as Jordan and myself. To our uh, musicians you're about to hear, Michael and Janet and Susan with uh, Chuck and Jordan and Kate Cannon, thanks for the beautiful, beautiful song. I really so appreciate your gifts. Our readers today, Chuck, with that beautiful uh, storytelling voice. Our board members, Janet and Jean, Pam, Bob, Jim, Rain, Joe. To Robin for sharing her story and Wendy again for the, for the offering and Scotty for the land acknowledgement. Rain, I love that your word for the year is a made up word. <laughs> I think that's perfect. I figure if Shakespeare can make up words, so can I. I invite us to, uh, to sing together for a moment with uh, some of our musicians. I am willing and invite you to let your word start now, be in conversation with this song and its message and see what arises for you. So 
Lovely, lovely. Thank you. Thank you for the singing. Our closing words, words of Eric Williams, blessed is the path. Blessed is the path on which you travel. Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is your mind that discerns the way. Blessed is the gift that you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you will become on the journey. May you go forth in peace. And in the words this community shares with each other each Sunday when we extinguish our chalices and prepare to part, but know that we carry the love and care and light with us, let us together carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. So may it be. We'll see you next Sunday, our new theme of beloved community and a service on the languages of love to start us out.